Earlier in the year, I completed updating my home office to accommodate what I thought would be a temporary working from home situation. Six months later, this situation has become a permanent one. So I decided to make the most of it and do a full makeover of the back half of my home office. Hello, I'm Matthew Encina. In this video, I'll give you a tour of my, yet again, transformed home office and take you through the process of how I built all of this from scratch, including this unique desk I made with a secret compartment inside. Before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Take classes on graphic design, film, and productivity, and learn alongside millions of other creatives on real projects that help you grow and stay inspired. Stick around till the end of the video where I'll share one major organization tip I learned on Skillshare. Kicking this project off, my main goals in mind were to create more flat surface to work on, expand my storage, and find a nice way to display my collectibles. I also miss my standing desk at work and wanted to make that a part of the setup. Recently, my wife Belinda and I built out her art studio from scratch. I really love the idea of her long flowing desk, so I wanted to incorporate that into the design of my space by creating a wood desk that extended onto this IKEA shelf that I already had in the room. Since I needed extra storage, I planned to add two long shelves that extended the width of the room. I began by prepping the work area taking down artwork, shelves, and getting rid of my plywood cabinet. Don't worry, it found a good home with my brother. I then patched up all the holes in the wall and put a fresh coat of paint. The first part of the build were the long shelves I wanted to install on my walls. I took a trip to Home Depot and bought two 9 foot by 1 foot solid red oak boards. Belinda sanded these boards down with 220 grit sandpaper and I coated them with my favorite oil wax finish. To mount these shelves on the wall, I used these heavy duty steel brackets, which I screwed into my studs with cabinet screws. These support a lot of weight in case I choose to load these with heavy books in the future. The next part of my build was making a custom standing desk. One thing I brought home from work was my DJ gear, which I stored at the office for whenever we had parties. DJing is a fun, therapeutic hobby of mine, which I started back in 1999, and I wanted to incorporate it as a fun aspect to my office. So I designed something that would work as a variable standing desk and double up as a DJ booth to hold my turntables and mixer. I ended up using white oak plywood for this desk to match the rest of the wood in the space. Everything was going smoothly until I made a huge mistake. I was in the process of drilling dowel holes into the desk cover when I accidentally drilled through it. I was stressing out, thinking I had to start over. But then I moved into problem solving mode. To design around my mistake, I decided to cut off the strip of wood I messed up and redo the holes correctly. This made a visible gap in the back of the desk but I ended up liking the way it looked. It was a happy accident. I then moved on and installed a continuous piano hinge and installed a soft close support for the cover. The problem was the soft close didn't work. It couldn't even hold the lid open. After a day of researching better options, I found what's called a gas strut lid support, which wasn't a soft close, but a soft open. Luckily, this option worked to support the weight of my lid. With the top of the desk built, I moved on to installing the legs. Because this was more narrow than a usual desk, at 22 inches by 51 inches, I had to get legs that could support the smaller size and weight. I ended up buying these motorized legs by Direction Desk that fit my build perfectly. I loaded all of my DJ gear into the desk, but I wasn't satisfied with the aesthetic of the design. Something didn't look right to me. Then I came up with this idea to include some kind of lining inside. Belinda and I went to a few fabric stores to look at options and eventually ended up going with this gray wool felt 
that match my Grovemade desk pad on the other side of my office. Belinda upholstered this material to a thin sheet of wood she cut out and glued it together using an adhesive sheet we found at the fabric store. All it took was a hot iron and some patience to apply. We slid that lining inside the desk and put a grommet to run wires through and it looked fantastic. I went ahead and installed my techniques, which are classic DJ turntables, and my recently upgraded Newmark scratch mixer into the desk. There are a lot of cables needed to power and connect the devices, so I spent some time organizing them to hide them from sight. I used cable ties and channels to route my wires, and I used the cable box to store my surge protector and power bricks. One key upgrade I wanted to do in this part of my office was improve the lighting situation. Because I'm already in the Philips Hue ecosystem, I invested in a few light strips and play lights, and I installed them on the shelves and inside the DJ booth so that at night, everything looked well lit. With the desk complete, I moved on to customizing this IKEA bookshelf I had already owned. I wanted it to feel like I had one long continuous surface to work on. I also wanted to match the long horizontal shelves above. So with a little bit of glue and a few pocket hole screws, I created a wood wrap out of the same white oak plywood as my desk. I'll be honest, my build for this was pretty flimsy because I didn't want to glue it directly onto the IKEA bookshelf. Commitment issues. If you want something more sturdy and permanent, I'll leave a link to a great tutorial by Modern Builds in the description. With everything built, the rest of my time was spent reorganizing my books, collectibles, and tools. I also made some room for a few plants. Because of sponsors like Skillshare, I'm able to make content like this for you. Skillshare is a place dedicated to learning. They're always launching new premium classes and cost less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Personally, I've enjoyed the Productivity Masterclass from Thomas Frank, which taught me new tools and systems to keep my projects and files organized. One big tip I learned from that class was how to reduce my physical documents by scanning them with my phone and storing them digitally. This cleared up a lot of space in my office. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Clicking the link is the easiest way to show your support for me while unlocking your own creativity and productivity. And that ends the tour of my updated home office. It's a place that I can work in during the day and relax in at night when I wanna spend some time with some music. Lately, my wife and I have become addicted to home improvement and DIY builds. So let me know if you'd like to see more of that stuff here in the future. For more frequent updates, follow my Instagram at modmusings. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I've also left links to helpful resources and the products I use to create this space. All of that can be found in the description. With that out of the way, it's time for some music.